All right, so there's been a bit of a shake-up in DA ranks today. Natasha Mazzoni has been removed from her chief whip position, replaced by her deputy, Siviwe Guarube. Mazzoni takes up the less prominent role for the party on the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence. So it's been an impressive rise in the party for Guarube since becoming an MP, I think, back in 2019, and she joins us now. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. Great achievement. How do you feel about the new job? Excited or terrified? <laughs> Thank you very much, Sadia. Good evening and good evening to your viewers. I suppose it's a little bit of both, but uh, mostly excited. I think that uh, there's a great opportunity to shake up Parliament. I think following the Zondo Commission um, report, there are a number of things that we should be as members of Parliament pushing for, some reforms that we should be pushing for, stuff which is quite exciting. Um, and so I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in and continuing the work that I was doing as the Deputy Chief Whip along with uh, Natasha Mazzoni. Yeah, you've had a lot of preparation as, as deputy. I presume you've read all the rules of parliament, so that shouldn't be a problem. But there's a lot going on uh, in parliament. What do you see as your, your biggest and most important mandate? I mean, is it making sure that the president makes good on his promise uh, to come back to us after the final report of the state capture report uh, was handed over to him and sort of outline, uh, lay out what exactly he's going to do? Or is it actually uh, the issue of Pala Pala, where we're seeing growing calls from opposition politicians to say, come on, President, you've got to speak out about this? Yeah, I think, um, I th I think broadly speaking, firstly, Sally, I think for me, obviously, the priority is leading a caucus of 96 people, which is, is a large caucus, um, and making sure that people are pulling all at the same time. At the same time, also, it's very important for me to make parliament relevant to ordinary South Africans. I think that politicians have become a lot detached, and I think the institution has become detached from South Africans and what it is that South Africans want from us. So I think it's quite important that in all that we do, we remember that we were actually sent there by the people of South Africa and that we, we, we make sure that the issues that are debated there are actually the issues that are facing South Africans. Then, of course, there are the timeliest things that, as you mentioned, the issue around um, uh, Pala Pala, the issue around uh, the rising, the crisis of the, the cost of living crisis and the like. And so the issue around how do we deal with the recommendations from the Zondo Commission report. So I think with those things, they, they are incredibly urgent. Um, and of course, you would have seen we have been meeting as the opposition parties, figuring out ways in which we can really work together as opposition parties to strengthen the, the oversight role that parliament ought to have. And also figuring out how do we proceed with holding particularly the president accountable for what is alleged to have taken place on his farm? Because one, you've got an, an option to go down the route of an ad hoc committee, like we saw with the, with the, with the Nkandla saga. You've got the route that the ATM has initiated, which is the Section 89 inquiry. And some are saying, move a motion of no confidence. Uh, make sure there's a secret ballot and rely on some members of the ANC to vote along with us. But all of these things, they need a lot of interrogation. And also, we must actually realize that it's not just about voting out a president because we don't like the president, but it's about getting to the bottom of it and saying, whoever is in charge, you've got to understand that you are held accountable by the same laws that govern the rest of South Africans. And so that's going to be a big part of the, the coming term. The president is coming to answer questions in the House uh, on, the, on the 30th of August. I have no doubt that that's going to be a big part of some of the things that is, is, is posed to him. Will you be in the hot seat by then? Is it an immediate um, promotion? Yes, yeah, so um, they, they started today um, with the bang, <laughs> I suppose, and uh, and so and and so yeah, and and, and like, as I say, mm. there's a lot of uh, a lot of working together with opposition parties to really get to to the bottom of this. And personally, for me, I think Sally, there's a lot we can take from that Zondo Commission report and really ask ourselves: Are the rules of Parliament really holding government to account? Are we doing what we yeah. are sent there to do? And um, we've got to make sure that we get that work done. Critical time. Um, of course, being a woman in politics is, is still not easy. Um, and I'm thinking of some of your uh, predecessors in the party. Um, Lindy Wimazabuko, she was a DA parliamentary leader. She's on record. And we all knew uh, the awful comments that were made about her appearance. Um, really sexist comments. 
Um, has it changed in Parliament or are you going to have to expect the same sort of abuse? I think I think it's 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 moved uh, uh, sli ever so slightly, but um, I mean I still very much experience ageism as a big thing in in in, in our politics, um, uh, particularly as a young black woman in in South African politics. There is uh, that requirement of respectability, um, where people don't understand that you know the, this is not about our age gap, but this is about the fact that we are colleagues. And of course, you know, um, I sat in a meeting with opposition parties, uh, the leaders of opposition parties just the other day, and uh, I couldn't help but notice that I was the only woman and possibly the only person under 35. And so there's a lot of room to, there's a lot of room um, that we've got to really improve on in our politics, mm. Sally. And we've also become, we've got to also attract a lot of people to try and come into public service. I think a lot of people are leaving public service. A lot of sure. people are finding alternative ways um, of serving their country. And we've got to make, um, you know, serving your country attractive. Mm. Um, I want to draw your attention to something that actually came through to our newsroom just a little earlier. And it relates to a controversial comment from your leader, John Stiernhuizen. Um, he was interviewed um, for Podcast and Chill with Mac G. And what he said about his ex-wife has drawn a great deal of response. Um, and we're going to play that clip with kind permission from them. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, what does dango mean? Dango. Mm. Dango. Thank you. Yeah! Yay! Yay! Right, Jono, you, you know the problem, of course. Jono, we see how you got that one right. And then this one is for the sake of the podcast, yeah? yeah. What is roadkill? What's roadkill? <laughs> Sounds a lot like my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> if Drop it. It. we have... So, um, I am not asking you to make excuses for a man, even if he is your boss. So how do you feel, though, as a woman, when you hear your leader describing a woman as roadkill? Look, I mean, I, I really would want to see a lot more of that podcast. It's the first time I'm, I'm seeing it, uh, uh, Sally, just right now on your show. Um, but again, I mean, I think uh, these are some of the things that we ought to be very, very mindful of. And some of the utterances of people that lead us in the country need to be exemplary. And, um, and I think it's also important that as women in politics, we're not afraid to speak up and say, well, you know, that was inappropriate or, the, you know, you've got to track that and that's something that as a leader in my caucus is something as a culture that I want to cultivate um, and so I would like to see a, a lot more of that and have a conversation with John um, but as I said I think it's important that as women in politics that we don't cultivate the culture of simply you know um, you know just keeping quiet and uh, just minding your own business and going about your knitting. We've got to be quite vocal about things that are wrong. Um, and that's a commitment that I'm making to my caucus as I'm about to lead them and uh, to the people of South Africa. I think what's even more disturbing for me is that the DA Twitter handle has actually retweeted that very specific clip. So whoever's sending out your mm -hmm. social media messages didn't see anything wrong with John Stiernhuizen uh, saying, oh, that sounds like my ex-wife when asking what is roadkill. Um, there's been a huge response. Uh, people are saying it's sexist, it's disgusting. We're in Women's Month. We know the rate of gender-based violence. And I don't really care about context here. I want to hear you say what you actually think. He was asked, what is roadkill? He said, it sounds like my wife, my ex-wife. Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. Well, I've told you what I think, Sally. Uh, I've told you that uh, that is a conversation that I would like to have with John about what does that mean and, and why that was said. And I've said that the commitment is that, you know, we've got to speak out when things are deeply inappropriate. Yeah. And so I would like to reserve the, the, the right to be able to go and speak to him. Um, as I said, it's the first time I'm seeing the clip on your show. And so I think it's only fair before I, uh, you know, make pronouncements on, on, on television to be able to have a conversation with John about the context of those comments and to be able to, st to state exactly what I, I think. Mm. And so that, that is, that's the answer. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the same day that the DA has unveiled a huge poster, quite rightly, I feel, saying, uh, Minister Trele, a woman is not lucky 
when she's raped. And there's context there too. The context is he was saying these women were gang raped. How horrific. And he's saying in that context, mm -hmm. you're almost lucky if you were just raped once. Totally unacceptable. Uh, it speaks to a deeper Absolutely. problem of misogyny. And I'm again putting to you that context is one thing. Um, but that quick and immediate sure. response is problematic. I'm not asking you to make excuses. I'm asking you to, mm. to make a strong statement about something that looks and sounds awful. Sally, I'm, I'm not making excuses. No, and I mean, I, nor do I feel as though I'm being pressured to make excuses. I don't think that anybody in a liberal organization is going to have to be forced to take a party line, especially on something like this. I'm not, uh, that's not, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying to you is that I would like to have an opportunity to have a conversation with John about the contents of that podcast so that I can make my views clear and so to him and also publicly. I don't think it is fair to say to me now that, uh, you know, can you can I have your knee jerk reaction right now on television when I've yet to have a conversation with it? And I agree with you, even with the Peggy Tele issue, that regardless of what the context is and what he had said about those women, the reality is that no one is should be ever feel lucky to have been raped by one person. But what I'm saying to you here is that, yes, while the issue is problematic, and as I've seen from the uh, from the clip now, I would like an opportunity to have a conversation with the leader of the opposition about this. All right. Well, we respect that and thank you. I know we put you on the spot, but it is an important issue and we look forward to, to hearing your statements oh. when you've assessed the entire situation. Once again, congratulations on your new position. We wish you well. That, of course, is the DA's newly appointed Chief Whip, Sibiwe Kwarube.